Welcome to this edition of the Native News Update. I'm your host for today's edition, Paul Domain. Many of the stories and information here can be found at our website, www.indiancountrynews.com, where your online membership helps support this television station. Here are some of the news updates for the day from the Associated Press and other Native news sources around the country. Eloise Cobell, lead plaintiff in the 12-year-old class action lawsuit over the government's mismanagement of Indian trust accounts, expressed appreciation recently that the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia has ordered a speedy hearing in the case. The court's order indicates that oral argument is likely to be heard this spring. The first briefs are to be filed on Jan by January 21st and the last by April 7th under the order. That issue is a district court order that awarded $455 million to the Indian plaintiffs. The plaintiffs view the order as disappointing, saying it disregards Supreme Court and D.C. Circuit Court rulings that are binding on the district court, including rulings on government trust law. The government has also appealed the ruling, saying that the plaintiffs are do nothing because the United States is immune from accountability. The United Tribes Technical College honored 23 mid-year graduates during a ceremony December 19th at the college in Bismarck. The college's fall honoring program completed the fall semester and marked the beginning of a three-week holiday break for students and staff. 21 of the grads earned Associate of Applied Science degrees, two earned certificates of completion in the field of medical transcription. The program's keynote speaker, Kevin Hullett, president of the Bismarck Mandan Chamber, said strength and vision are what drive communities and students. Six of the UTTC graduates earned degrees from the college's small business management program that led the list of college programs with the most mid-year grads. Red Wing, Minnesota city officials say they are puzzled by the allegations that police have been singling out people driving out of the Prairie Island Indian community. The Prairie Island Tribal Council requested the Red Wing Police Department reevaluate its procedures in a short letter to the city during early December. The letter alleges community members, employees, and patrons leaving the area have been arbitrarily profiled in traffic stops and investigations. Police Chief Tom Sleeton said police have absolutely not been profiling people leaving the reservation. The city's letter in response requests a meeting to discuss the allegations, but Sleeton says he has not received a response. A tribal spokeswoman tells the Red Wing Republican Eagle the tribe will address the matter privately with the city. Clark County and nonprofit Timbisha Shoshone Corporation have joined the state of Nevada in challenging the Federal Energy Department's application for a license to build and operate the proposed Yucca Mountain Nuclear Waste Repository. In a nutshell, we're challenging DOE's capacity to construct and operate a safe repository, said Irene Navis, Clark County Nuclear Waste Planning Manager. The county submitted 15 contentions December 22nd to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, challenging performance assessments and the validity of compu computer models for the planned repository 90 miles northwest of Las Vegas, Nevada. Joe Kennedy, Interim Executive Director of the Timbisha Shoshone Yucca Mountain Oversight Program Nonprofit Corporation, said one of the three contentions he filed pertains to environmental justice. Timbisha Shoshone tribal members are concerned about how the planned repository will affect land, air, and water, Kennedy said. The Native Community Action Council, based in the White Pine County community of Baker, also filed a petition to intervene in the licensing process. A graduation ceremony for members comprising the inaugural class of a federally supported pilot project to train American Indians in the commercial building trade was held December 19th near the city of Chicago. The event is the result of an agreement between the Indian Affairs Office of Indian Energy and Economic Development and United Association. The 326,000 member journeymen and apprentice plumbers and pipe fitters unions of North America to offer unemployed and underemployed American Indians from economically challenged tribal communities in the U.S. 
the chance to acquire new job skills that can lead to job opportunities back home or elsewhere. The graduates representing tribes from across the country have spent the past 16 weeks in intensive in-class instruction and hands-on training. IEED funding has enabled them to spend the required time away from their homes and families. The Secretary of the Interior created the IEED to encourage economic development in Indian country. Its mission is to foster strong Indian communities by creating jobs, Indian-owned businesses, and a trained workforce, and by developing Indian energy and mineral resources and increasing access to business capital. The University of Alaska Fairbanks has named two Alaska Native doctoral students to its first Mellon Dissertation Fellows. As Mellon Fellows, Teresa John and Jordan Lewis are eligible each to receive a $30,000 stipend and research and travel funds in addition to tuition and fees. Lewis is in the fourth year of doctoral work at UAF. His studies focus on gerontology and circumpolar health issues in rural Alaska communities. His dissertation research explores the concept of successful aging from an Alaskan Native perspective. Lewis is an Aluet from NACNIC. He holds a master's degree in social work from Washington University. John is an assistant professor in the Department of Alaska Native and Rural Development. She began her doctoral work in January 2007 through the Second Language Acquisition Teacher Education Project at the Alaska Native Language Center. Her dissertation will include the results of her ethnographic research on Yupik dance in southwestern Alaska, <clears throat> where John grew up. John holds a bachelor's degree in sociology and a master's degree in cross-cultural education from UAF. <clears throat> A group of veterans from the United Tribes Technical College of Bismarck, North Dakota, will march in the National Parade for the new president on January 20th in Washington, D.C. President-elect Barack Obama's inaugural committee officially extended the offer on December 15th to the college to march in the 56th inaugural parade. The United Tribes veterans will be those who have served in the Middle East conflicts. They will be among representatives from across the country in the historic parade down Pennsylvania Avenue from the Capitol to the White House following the presidential swearing-in ceremony on the steps of the Capitol. According to a spokesman for the inaugural committee, at this time, United Tribes is the only organization from North Dakota selected for this event. Veterans who will be part of the United Tribes entry include employees and students. United Tribes Chief of Staff Wes Longfeather is organizing the group. Participants will also represent the state's five tribes who govern the college. Three affiliated tribes of Fort Berthold, Spirit Lake Tribe, Sistanwapitan Oyate, Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, and the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa. Matthew Box has been sworn as the new Southern Ute Tribal Chairman after winning a runoff election. Box defeated Howard Richards with 66% of the vote during December after neither candidate gained a majority of the vote in the November election. The final vote tally was 227 to 115 for Box. Box was sworn in December 21st at the tribe's new casino and hotel. He replaces Clement Frost, who served for decades on the consul. And with that, this is the latest, has been the latest uh, round of Indian Country News on this program, the Native News Update. Stay tuned for another edition tomorrow. We want to thank our underwriters for helping us broadcast the Native News Update and our digital mall partners, powwows.com and nativeview.com broadcasting from Helena, Montana. Thank you and have a good day. <laughs>